What if I told you there was a way to get unlimited nutrition clients, more than you can handle without constantly having to post on social media, or direct message a bunch of strangers that don't really want your nutrition coaching, or even grow a big following? This is a lot simpler than you think, plus I'll do you one better. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step strategy to make it happen. What's the strategy? It's being a guest on podcasts. And so those are like the big reasons why this is something you don't want to miss out on. Today, I have a special guest that's going to show you how to make this happen. He's made over $250,000 in his coaching over the last year alone by doing just this one thing, being a podcast guest. Without posting on his social media, he did it all by being a guest on other people's podcasts. There's a big lesson here today, and my guest, Adrian Moreno, has no problem sharing it. Yeah, and the big lesson, real quick, that I want people to really take from this thing, the best way to market is not to market to your customer directly market to the people who have your customers. Okay, makes sense. But how do you get on these podcasts? And how do you position your nutrition coaching services as something someone wants? First, you need to find the right podcasts. Which okay, for hire. beautiful question. All right, so the first step is to find the right shows. And so what I mean by this is people fall into the trap of, how do I get booked on like the biggest shows possible? I've gotten $25,000 worth of clients from a show with less than 200 monthly listeners, right? Because it doesn't matter the size. The quality is where it's at. If I can get a hundred of coaches and consultants on a podcast to listen to me, I know I'm going to convert at least one to two of them, right? And so it's a matter of finding the podcast that have your people. So one of your first steps that you should already do as a business owner is know who the heck you're serving, right? So if you're clear on your niche, you're clear on who you're serving, Ask them what they're listening to. Ask them, hey, what are your favorite podcasts? Text all your clients, email your email list. What's your favorite podcast? You're gonna to start to get a list of that. Another step to do is, and so this is what I call building your dream 100. This is actually like the first step of the framework. And that is building a list of the podcasts with your dream audience. So, one, uh, so other than directly asking, that should be your first step. A lot of people overcomplicate it and they don't ask people stuff. So ask people stuff. The next thing is who are the influencers already in your space? So for me, I'm in, so for me, there's three main buckets. There's three main markets, health, wealth, relationships. Whatever your offer is falls underneath one of these. My offer falls underneath wealth, right? I, I'm a pot. I can show you how to get booked on podcasts and generate money from the podcast. So I fall under wealth. And so my sub market under that is marketing. So I'm like, okay, who are the influencers in, in the marketing space? Russell Brunson, Amy Porterfield, Frank Kern, Neil Patel, where right? you start coming up with all these names, write those names down on a spreadsheet and then go on your podcast app and look up their name. What you're going to see is all the shows they've been on. And now you now have a list of shows that are interested in your topic. They're interested in guests and they're more receptive to your message. That's how you, that's the first step, is making sure you're targeting a podcast that actually has your buyer, that actually has who you work with. There's no point of me getting on a big podcast with millions of listeners and they're all single moms and in, in they're in the nursing field. What the hell is that gonna do for me, right? And so mm -hmm. I can be a thought leader, but I won't make a dollar from it. So that's the first step. Okay, that's the first step, finding the right podcast to be a guest on. But you can't just show up as a podcast guest, talk about what you do and expect to get clients. You need to show up and answer questions as a guest a certain way. Adrian calls this being a power guest. Let's move on to step number two. Something in my framework I call being a power guest. And so a power guest is a very strategic guest. And the way that you answer questions, there is a way that you answer them. And the way that you answer them is through something the most hypnotic thing in the universe and that the most hypnotic thing in the universe is stories stories hypnotize audiences the first thing is it hypnotizes the audience even more because the moment you say well i once had a client come to me who you're starting a story you're opening a loop in their brain now they want you to finish a story so they're more engaged the second thing is you're taking somebody through you're showing them that you understand the problem better than they do because somebody's like, oh, I have anxiety. But when I go on a show and talk about the reality of where anxiety comes from and how it looks when I work with the client, all of a sudden they're like, holy crap, this guy knows way more than I do about my, my own problem. He can hire me. Because the moment that you feel like somebody knows something more than you about their problem, their subconscious thought is immediately, how can I get help from them? Because they understand it better than everybody else. 
So the way that you want to answer questions is through client stories and your own story. But majority of them, you want it to be client stories. Hey, you know, for example, the nutrition. What do you, how do you overcome emotional eating? Well, I once had a client who, you know, was binge eating every night because she was depressed. And what we did, then you go into that, but make sure you share the end, the end result. So you need to show up a certain way as a power guest. But there's one more piece of the puzzle here. We found the right podcast. We now know how to show up on them. But one last thing, how do you actually get on the podcast? Okay, you've done some some like actual research around what are the good ones I should be on. And now I'm on a podcast and I've showed up as the expert. How do I actually get on them, Adrian? Yes, I, the big part. How do we get on podcasts? All right. So when I first had this epiphany, I was like, okay, how am I going to get on these shows? I bought this $97 course from this woman, the podcast queen. Like it's like her branding. It's like the pod. I was like, all right, cool. She must be amazing. I bought her course, she taught me how to do it. I was like, okay, cool. I sent 40 pitches using her process. I didn't even get a response. Like it, it wasn't a no, I didn't get a response. And so I'm an entrepreneur who lives off of efficiency. Like my life is like extremely efficient. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to sit here and send another 50 pitches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at why this email isn't working. First things first, the email literally started with, hey, my name is blank and I do blank. Let me tell you the number one rule of marketing. Nobody gives a damn about you. I don't care about you. Uh, the, your, the, the prospects don't care about you. Like, you know, uh, before Mark knew what I could do what's for him, for he me? didn't care about what's me. In it for me? Right? Exactly. It's like, what's in it for me? If somebody's reading your email because they don't like you, it's not, yeah, they may like you, but it's not because they like you. It's because, oh my God, this email might do something for me. Right? And so if you start a pitch with that, hey, my name is blank, automatic turn off. So I was like, okay, I see why this sucks. And the second reason was the email was 800 words long. In other words, I was asking you to complete a chore if you wanted to read my email. Like, hey, Mark, I wrote a book for you. You mind reading this in the middle of your busy day? And people who, ho who host podcasts, I'm a podcast host. I get 20, 30, maybe 40 pitches a day. I trash like 99% of them. And so when I saw that, I was like, all right, what are my powers? Well, my big power is storytelling. I'm a phenomenal storyteller. So I was like, let me tell a story in my pitch. The second thing was I have a great personality and I'm a great speaker. So instead of sending this video, I mean, instead of sending this email, let me turn my webcam on and let me tell a story in a video. And I told a story in a video and it starts with the connection part. Like, hey, Mark, came across your podcast blank, talking all about them, talking about why I like them. And then I introduce myself through a story. I know you don't know me. My name is Adrian. To make a long story short, my life was deeply impacted when I was four years old, standing in my grandmother's living room, looking directly at my dad, dropped to his knees, scream, begging my mom not to leave him. And I tie that into how that led to me wanting to become an entrepreneur and doing the things that I do. And then make your CTA, make your ask. Keep the video under three minutes. I sent, and it's not one video that you send to everybody. It's one video per person, right? So instead of sending 50 pictures out and getting one booking, you can send 10 pitches out, but these pitches are high quality and get five bookings, right? Because me, I got a 50% booking rate right now. So if I send 10, I know I get five. And so, and which is really high in the cold pitching space. And so that's how you do it is you want to turn a loom on and tell your story through a video. Because telling your story through a video is what make it sell. And you can sit here and say, I don't have an interesting story. One of my clients, Chase, said, Adrian, I don't have an interesting story. I said, bullshit. Use the framework. Go do it. Tell me what happens. You pit six, six shows, got booked on all six. And I was like, there's your lesson. Not, It's not that some story has to be interesting and amazing. No, it's that all stories are interesting and amazing because we're human beings. We love stories, but not all stories are told. So it's a matter of just telling your story. And what is that story? Why do you do what you do? Tell them why you do what you do before you tell them what you do and how you can do that for them. And when you do that in a video, keep it under three minutes, you win. And so the pitch, the email pitch, make it like less than a hundred words, super short email pitch and say, Hey, watch this video because the email is not to get them to say yes. The email is to sell them on clicking the button. Then when they click the button, that video does the job of getting them to say yes. 
amazing. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's very similar to a process that we use in the Dr. Mark method called the Dr. Mark method free nutrition report. This works because it's not something generic. You're creating connection. But back to podcasts for a second, and I want to make this even easier for you guys to follow. Adrian has a completely free training on how to work this into your nutrition coaching business. You can find that at the link right here, but you'll also find it as the first link in the descriptions below. Now, if you're not sold on trying out podcast guesting yet, I get it. But there's some really solid rationale behind why you should be doing this. Listen to this. Sure. So I was actually a fitness coach. Uh, I lost 91 pounds in 2017. Changed my whole life, right? And so I wanted to help everybody else who had the same troubles I had. You know, because you typically want to solve the problems you had as an entrepreneur, right? And so I started my fitness business, hired a mentor, and the mentor told me the all the social media stuff, right? Like make all the DMs every day, uh, make the post, uh, you know, um, add 50 people a day and make all your stories, put offers and all of that stuff, right? How'd that make you feel? Suck. It just made me feel shitty. Like I did not like it at all. It was not fun, but it worked. I felt grimy, but within the first year, I within not the first year, first 18 months, so a year and a half, I did just under half a million through all of that. And so it worked, but this was the problem was over the last few years, that strategy has been watered down by so many people that the market has become more sophisticated and understands that strategy. So they have their bullshit meter up a lot. And so mm -hmm. what I started to notice was whenever I switched into doing my hypnosis business, I was still doing both. But whenever I started going down that uh, hypnosis route and doing all the marketing strategies, all, nothing was working. And then I knew a lot of people who did very well and all of a sudden their fitness businesses were crashing and it wasn't working anymore. And so I just basically found myself at this point of desperation of like, yo, I need clients. All the money I have is going away. Like I made a lot of money, but all of my savings are going towards all the bills and no more income is coming in. And, right. you know, it got to the point I had to move back to my mom's house. Like it was the most shameful time of my life. And when I was there at my mom's, though, in that state of desperation, something ended up happening. Uh, one of one of my friend, one of my clients, I hypnotized her, helped her overcome a problem. She was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Uh, I run a group coaching program. Can you come and speak to my clients? Sure. I show up. She's like, yeah, like 30 people show up all the time. I was like, all right, cool. I show up. Only nine showed up. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. Still, let me do the thing. I did the thing, and after that call, two out of the nine reached out to me directly and said, hey, how can I work with you? I was like, whoa, okay. And two days later, another person reached out, and he was like, hey, I just watched a replay of that recording. Are you accepting clients right now? I was like, I was desperate. I was like, yeah, sure. You know, I'm totally accepting mm -hmm. clients. And then it hit me like a wall of bricks. The epiphany was the best way to get business is instead of marketing directly to your customer, market to the people that already have your customers. And this is where the idea was born. Could Adrian get on more podcasts and speaking opportunities to build his business? That's exactly what he learned to do. And there's some crazy power to this. Market to the people that have the attention of your customers and the respect of your customers. Because if you get endorsed by those people to that customer base, you gain all that respect. The idea of podcast guessing hit me. How, why not podcast guessing? Because podcasts are like virtual masterminds. They have a leader, the host, and they have an engaged audience, the listeners. Why don't you start getting booked on podcasts? And so in 2022, I got booked on 52 podcasts and generated over uh, just under a quarter of a million dollars. There is nothing more powerful than a recommendation from a trusted friend. There is nothing more powerful than a recommendation from a trusted friend. Think about the last time you told your doctor, no, I'm not going to go to that person you referred me to. Like, you don't say that. When my dentist was like, Adrian, go get your wisdom teeth out. Okay, sounds great, right? But can this really work for nutrition coaches? Life improvement space, meaning you help somebody improve the professional, their relationships, their health in like a nutrition coach, a fitness coach. If you help people improve their life, why do people listen to podcasts? to improve their life so your audience that audience is already primed to take actions in the directions of improvement so you're fishing where the fish are you're not fishing where there's turtles right like you're fishing where the fish are and so that is one of the most powerful things about podcasts i'm gonna break down some other stats but when it comes to podcasting understand that that audience is extremely primed 
to buy something that will improve their life because they're in that space already. So they're interested in improving their life. That's the first thing. It's a, like it's a dream pool of clients. The second thing is more than 63%, according to HubSpot, more than 63% of podcast listeners make more than $100,000 a year and their collective household makes at least a quarter million dollars a year. This means they got the money to pay you. And it's proven that the richest audience are podcast listeners, even above books. The richest marketing channel is podcast listeners because just like readers, podcast listeners tend to make more money than people who don't listen to podcasts. In the same way, yet readers make more money than people. It's just statistically proven. And so they got the money to pay you. The next thing is more than 53% of podcast listeners say they don't mind being marketed to if it's on a show they respect. So if there's a show that they like, they don't mind sponsorships. They don't mind marketing angles because they understand it's supporting that show and they like the show. And also they're going to listen to whatever content's on that show. So they actually don't mind it. And the best part is 68% of podcast listeners say they seriously consider a brand pitched to them on a podcast more than any other brand, because again, the respect factor. And so I want to thank Adrian for sharing his knowledge here today. Make sure to check out the completely free training in the description below for a step-by-step -step process to put this into action. Why build an audience when you can leverage someone else's? This seems so smart to me, but it's still a wise idea to build up your own social media, but you need the right strategy and I can show you how to do it. Grab a pen and paper and check out this video I've linked up right here where you can steal my entire social media strategy. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.